and uh, and then I have this uh, this game, which I think will sh sh should be a, a, a somewhat amusing way of uh, introducing some of the things that that I've learned to do wrong over the years. That's the whole concept. So, um, so I uh, want to start with the things I carry every day. Actually, let me uh, put the cat down here. Um, I have this case that I bring with me everywhere I go. I don't know if you can see that uh, in the little picture, but. Um, it's just a good way to keep things organized. Uh, I think I think it looks more impressive than when I used to just randomly fumble through, fumble around, and get out stuff. So it's it's and and there's a way I can lock it, which anyone could break in ten minutes, but you can't break in one minute. So um, I feel like it's safer against like your old smash and grab. So I carry all the stuff together. Uh, I've, the first tools that I started with were humidity meter and moisture meters, and the two of those can actually find and solve many, many water problems. And water problems, I would say, is uh, probably the majority of what we end up working on that, that I pull out tools for. Um, usually there's some mystery about where it came from, what's, what's going on, and you got to track it down. And these are tools that can help you understand if there's likely to be a sort of a humidity level problem. And if there's uh, a water, liquid water issue, a moisture meter is a great way to track it. And I will show you a lot more about that when we do this game. Uh, the other tools that we ended up getting, uh, an infrared camera, which is really a terrific tool in a lot of ways, and I will talk more about that specifically. Um, I got a blower door and a manometer and did the BPI uh, education, which was fantastic. I strongly recommend it to anyone who works in the trades. It's really opened my eyes. After 20 years of thinking I knew what I was doing, I realized there was a ton more stuff that I just wasn't even aware of. And being able to use the manometer and the blower door has enabled me to solve many, many problems that were just complete mysteries to me before. So that was great. And then the, the last thing that I use a lot is data loggers, which are just little things that record stuff over time. And I'm almost always using temperature or temperature and humidity data loggers. And those allow me to solve problems that only happen intermittently or solve issues that happen uh, when it's really, really cold at 4 a.m and I'm not at that person's house. So those are super helpful. And if I'm not mistaken, Randy, you, you have a lot to talk about on uh, blower doors, manometers, and data loggers, right? Um, not so much with data loggers. I, okay. I, I don't use those, but yeah, the blower door testing. And, well, um, I find the data loggers, there's a lot to learn about those too. So maybe we'll, maybe we'll bring that up on another one, but I'm gonna skip over it for now. So uh, here's, here's what it comes down to for me. Uh, in addition to finding it really helpful to use these tools to find problems, it really helps explain things to people, to clients, to insurance companies, to architects, to all the various folks who are involved with your project. So I think uh, getting data together is really useful. Uh, here's a, just a quick thing that, that happened with me. Some clients called us, they had this weird thing where they, were, they had water in their basement and they just weren't really clear where it was coming from. And uh, I pulled out uh, the infrared camera and was able to take this shot where you can see um, not only am I able to see the wet area, you know, sort of everything in here, but I can see that there's more here and it sort of feathers out as you get away. So I can kind of tell where the water really is in this picture. And sure enough, it's from the, um, you know, the leaky water heater, uh, which is what you'd expect. Um, but the, the reason that they had called me, uh, I think they kind of knew, they kind of were pretty sure it was the water heater, but they also had another issue in the same room. So when we turned our head around, there's this little drywall seam that's split up here. And I think maybe some water had dripped out of there. Um, and then I, I was able to use the thermal camera and take a look at that area. And so the seam uh, is kind of this area here. And then it connected back to this much darker, um, sort of, in my opinion, much wetter area um, that, that, uh, that not, none of us were aware of. You couldn't see that with the naked eye. So, the infrared camera is really terrific because, you know, evaporation is a cooling process. Anything that's porous and wet will be cooler than the things around it that are porous and not wet. So it, it makes it very easy to do a quick scan and come to understand things really quickly about where you have a real water issue going on. Um, it's useful for other stuff too. I mean, they're kind of expensive to buy the, the kind that we got. It's um, you know, I got, I got one of these real FLIR cameras. This was about $2,000. Uh, 
um, which was quite a quite an expense. But I'll show you in a second. I'm using a two hundred dollar phone version, and I think it's just as useful. So these are very uh, within reach if uh, for for almost anyone. So anyway. Knowing that there was this spot in the ceiling, we ran upstairs, we can see there's this wavy floor area, that's a sign. It's right outside of a bathroom. I'm thinking already, oh, there's something wrong in this bathroom. Uh, the wallpaper's peeling off in the bathroom. I'm starting to think, well, maybe there's something going on upstairs. I don't know what's going on. But scanning that bathroom, no issues in that one. So I went over to the one on the other side of the wall and sure enough, there I found uh, another wet area and it turns out that it was a leak from the supply of this toilet. So again, just the infrared camera makes things quick, real quick. Uh, but I didn't have one of those for, for 10 years. I was finding and fixing moisture problems just using a moisture meter, and those are really fantastic. Uh, I started off with one that didn't have lights or sounds, and I found that the kind with the lights and the sounds work make allow you to work much faster because you don't have to face it. You don't have to have a light on it. You, you can just run across surfaces really fast when they're wet, they beep loud. And you'll see that again in a minute. Um, it also works on, somewhat works on various different surfaces and, and materials. Uh, I've had pretty good luck, even though I get screwy readings in natural stone and tile, um, up more than half of the time, there is an area that has much higher readings, even though I get weird readings all over the floor. They're weird and much higher in the area that turns out to be wet. So even though I don't think my, this moisture meter is designed to read masonry and tile, it does, seems to work most of the time. Um, and then another tool that I've used frequently is a pin moisture meter. Those can be more accurate and um, there are situations in which you want the utmost of accuracy um, whenever there's uh, another party involved who's going to be mad at you if you screw something up or try to make it look like you screwed something up, it's good to jab your pins in there and, and use the calibration setting, you know, make sure that you have everything set up cor correctly, take pictures. This is a, there's going to be an insurance claim on this water leak that someone had in their house. So I drew a drawing on the floor of what areas were wet and wrote down the moisture content of the wood so that when their insurance company tells them they didn't need to remove this plywood, they have more evidence that they should have. So uh, that kind of thing happens. It's, it's super accurate in wood, the pin moisture meter. Um, a lot of people don't like you poking holes in their wood. So I, I use a pinless meter 99% of the time. So again, with the infrared camera, you can find the wet stuff. Um, it just allows you to see things that you weren't aware of. Um, all of these spots that are, that are dark in this picture were away from the original leak area, which was actually ba back over here on this side. So a uh, really nice tool for that. Okay, Any, if anyone has questions on that, throw them in chat and someone can read them off to me. Um, Okay, so as I said, I've, I've, made, I've made a lot of mistakes. I've, it's possible I've made more mistakes than almost anyone you know. Um, so in the spirit of that, uh, you know, learn from the mistakes of others. You can't live long enough to make them all yourself. I'm going to play a little game here with us. So uh, the idea of the game is to actually, let me go ahead and switch my, uh, and we're going to, um, we're going to use four different methods to look and see if they are wet or not. So the, game, the goal of the game is, is there a moisture problem on this sample? And uh, I think uh, if, if you wanna play along, you can write up a thing like this uh, with, with a line for each of the samples. And, uh, and the four different uh, methods we're gonna use are the infrared camera, pinless moisture meter, pin moisture meter, and then a visual inspection. And at the end of it, we'll be able to say, was there a moisture problem or not? And uh, if, I, I heard that uh, Fine Home Building is giving away a free three-year subscription to whoever comes up with the right answers. Did I hear that right? <laughs> that sounds right. No, I'll that say yes. <laughs> that isn't right at all. That isn't right at all. Okay. Um, so, but, but go ahead and play along and let's, let's hear what folks think. Um, I think at the end, I'm, I'm curious to hear uh, in the chat how many you got right, ended up being right and how many ended up being wrong. So there's going to be 32 answers, I guess. Um, the last answer will really be the, the end of it, the correct answers. Okay, so I'm going to start with an infrared picture here. 
Sorry, this is definitely, definitely amateur hour. Oops. That's fun. There's a major delay. Oh, okay. I'm completely That's in keeping place. with it. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah, just, Does this even count, though? Oh, for God's sake. Okay. Okay. Almost. You mess up with my lighting here. Um, okay, so, yeah, that's me. All right. Based on what you're seeing here, we're going to write down which of these is wet based on an infrared inspection. I'll give it a few seconds. You can shout it out in the chat if you want. Put down the ones you think are wet and don't put down the ones you didn't. Okay. All right, I'm gonna get out my moisture meter. If you, if you need another look at this, let me know or try to do a screen cap. I'm, I'm going to move on. I'm going to move the camera out of the way. The thermal camera. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, my other tool that I have is uh, the, is the, the moisture meter. And this one, this one's a protimeter survey master or protimeter. I actually literally, literally don't know how to say that. Um, Got a couple of tips for using this. Um, first of all, every time I turn it on, I do this just to make sure it's in the right mode and it's working because this, this is a pin and pinless meter. And uh, if you're scanning stuff when it's in the pin mode and you're trying to use the pinless, you're, you're not finding anything. Believe me, I've definitely done that. Um, the other fun thing with the pin ones is I think, I think I've got it down to one third of the time I poke myself when I get out the pins. They're really dangerous. Um, the other cool thing I figured out is um, you can use one of these uh, painting tools and you can strap this to it with a Velcro strap. And, uh, and then you can attach that to a, a painter's pole and you can use that to reach really high difficult to access areas. And, th and this, uh, this painting tool actually has a flexible handle which actually, actually works out really well. It allows you to really uh, flatten this against the wall the way that you really need to. And we work in a lot of these houses with eight, nine, 10 foot, um, you know, much higher ceilings and, and, uh, and walls. So it's really helpful to be able to access those uh, remotely as it were. Okay, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna use the pinless mode. And I'm gonna test sample number one. Here we go. All right, uh, can you see the number on there? It's not beeping. No, can't see the three. number. Oh, really? Okay. Can Sorry. you read it? 75. I will read the numbers. Thank you for letting me know. Okay, so one, 75, no beeps and no numbers. Oh, you know what I meant to do first? Let me just show you. This is dry, drywall with my hand behind it. Um, so you usually get nothing or else the first green light on dry drywall. Wet drywall depending on how wet it is, you can get a really high number. So I'm up, I pinned the meter on that one, 999 is the highest number it does. And on this meter, the, the numbers are arbitrary. They don't actually, they're not trying to represent percent of moisture content. A lot of meters do represent percent of moisture content uh, and they're designed to work on wood, but this one does not. Okay, so moving on, number one, no light. Number two, I don't know, can you hear it beeping? It's very excited. Yeah, so we're at 180. Okay. Sample number three. How did that look in the infrared sample number three? Anyone want to shout that out? Try. Look, try. Look, look, yeah, no, no sign of moisture, right? Oh, man. I'm in the 700s here, 800s. I'll explain that one in a minute. All right. Sample four, how did that one look? Dry. All right, I'm in the 100s again. Interesting. 
Okay. All right, sample five. 170, 195. Actually forget, what did sample five look like? Was that, did that one look like it was cold or warm? Room temperature. Cold. Cold, Wet. okay. All right. Wow, sample six, I'm 500, 600. And what did that one look like? Dry. 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 Okay. All right, we're ready for seven. Seven is 500, 600 something, bouncing around. Okay. And then eight. I'm in the 500s and 600s again. Interesting. All right. Does everyone have their answers for all of those? Now we're going to do the pins. Actually, I'm going to do, I'm going to use the pins that I'm less likely to poke myself with and which should allow you to more or less see what the thing's doing a little bit better. Okay. So number one, let's see. Okay. So you can see no, no reading at all. Okay, number two, no reading at all. Number three, no reading at all. All right, number four, wait a minute. Okay, we got a little bit of a reading. Wow, I may actually be having some tech. Oh, God, I forgot to change the setting. All those were wrong. <laughs> this is exactly what I'm supposed to do. This is that perfect. makes it all now you feel know better, what life is really like making mistakes. See, I'm supposed to test this by using my skin to make sure that I've got conductivity. I forgot to because it's a big show. I'm screwing everything up. Okay, so back to number one. All right, this is saying 13, 14.0% moisture. And, it, and this meter is trying to read a wood moisture content. So if these are wood, that's what it'll give us. Okay, number two, 25 in the red zone. Number three, 76, way into the red. Number four, 18.0. Okay. Okay. I hope I didn't go too fast through those. I felt bad because I did them all wrong. All right. Number five. Twenty point four. Interesting. Number six. Eleven. Number seven. Yeah, it's reading 100% Pin the meter. All right, and number eight. Thirty-two percent. So very high. Okay. Now we've done three different methods. How do we feel about these? What do we think about number one? Doug, you no got idea at this point. <laughs> yeah, no I, idea. I keep up on my numbers, but I, I have to say, I felt like there was conflicting data. Did I get conflicting yes. data or am I just there's wrong? Conflicting, there's conflicting data for sure. Yeah, for different a real tools. reason. Yeah. Well, so let's think about what these things are measuring. What's, what's this one doing right now with, with the pins? Yeah. Yeah. Giving us an actual measurement. Oh, right. It's measuring conductivity between the two pins. Wood has a predictable amount of conductivity based on how much moisture is in it. So the more electric electricity goes between the two pins, the higher the reading the computer gives you. But you can see you can fool it by anything that conducts electricity reasonably well 
will make the meter think that it's in a wet piece of wood. Uh, when you look at the, uh, the other method, the pinless one, that's kind of a density meter, really. It's a, it's a really good one. It's very sensitive and uh, it's, it's, you know, it, it works very well, but you're really not reading water per se. You're just reading how dense the material is more or less. Um, and then what's the infrared measuring? It's, re it's reading energy. Yeah, it's reading the tent, right. Yeah, exactly, actually. Um, it's reading, right, it's reading infrared emissions, which normally is the temperature, um, but not always, uh, as we know. And actually, I learned something new about that today, which will be fun to show. Okay, so let's do the visual inspection. Oops, no wonder that was so high. Um, okay, so what have we got here? Uh, sample one, what do you think all that stuff is? Looks like mold. Yeah, it's mold. <laughs> it's mold and I brought it right here into my own house. <laughs> um, so this piece of drywall reads dry, but when you look at it, you see there was a problem. So uh, we actually get this a lot. A, a surprising number of people call us three or four weeks after they had a flood and ask us what needs to get fixed. Um, everything might be, be dry by all of the readings. Okay, this one, number two, is a piece of TPO over a piece of wet plywood, uh, wet drywall. The, the TPO is a roofing material, right? It's completely impermeable. So moisture is not evaporating out through this and cooling it off. Even though the drywall behind it is quite wet, the TPO is not allowing, the, allowing it to dry allowing it to cool. So with infrared, it doesn't look different. Uh, this is a piece of drywall. I put a piece of plastic over it, actually a Ziploc bag. Um, it's soaking wet, but again, with infrared, you can't, you're not reading that it's wet because there's no evaporation going on. And this has happened to me when people use fancy like oil-based uh, faux painting on their drywall. Sometimes it doesn't dry, the wet parts don't look any different at all because there's no evaporation going on. Um, now this is a piece of, these are pieces of oak and I tried to get them good and wet today. Um, so this actually happened to me once. I, I pulled out my infrared camera like the second day I had it and someone said their floor was, they were worried their floor was wet. And I looked at, it, at the floor with the camera and it didn't look wet. Um, you know, it all looked the same. Let's see, can I get that in there? Yeah, yeah, so the, I finished half of this board, the upper half, and I didn't finish the bottom half. So again, there's no, there's no moisture escaping through this finished surface. So even though the board is basically about the same wetness the whole way through, although you can see I had that, um, I had a piece of thing on there, I was trying to keep it wet for the meeting. You know, it's basically about as, oh, I'm doing this with a thing in the way. It's basically about as wet on each end, but the end with the finish doesn't look cold with the infrared camera because there's no evaporation. I think I beat that dead horse enough. All right, this one, um, this one we're getting these interesting, you know, somewhat high readings. And the drywall itself is actually dry. It just has a, a piece of duct metal behind it. So I'm actually reading the metal. That makes the meter go crazy. The drywall itself, not that bad. So that's another tr thing that I've definitely done wrong. This is really uh, happens in condo buildings a lot. They use, uh, besides the metal studs, they use all kinds of metal. Um, like it's, it takes the place of blocking. It's like strips of metal where you're gonna attach stuff to, trim and, and cabinets. So you're scanning along and all of a sudden it seems like you hit something, but all you're hitting is the sheet metal behind it. All right, then sample, uh, what are we on now? Six. It turns out EPDM makes moisture meters go crazy. So this is dry, but the meter is reacting to the EPDM like it's soaking wet. So again, it's, you got to watch out for what materials you're working with. Both of these roofing things can screw up the readings that you'd be getting. This one, there's a piece of metal foil in it. And again, that's making it go crazy. Um, 
it's just a thin metal tape. But I put this one in the front. So when we hit it with the pin moisture meter, the pins bridged across the metal and we got a maximum reading, right? We were basically completely conductive across the foil. So it's another thing you can do wrong with a pin meter. They actually, they're, <laughs> they used to make foil face drywall. I've only run into it once or twice. But if you do and use a pin meter on it, you're, you're gonna think you're going crazy. Okay, and then again with eight, eight is wet wood with no finish. So you can definitely tell with all the methods because it's cool because it's evaporating off the top of it. Okay, how'd we do, everyone? You stumped the chumps. That's for sure. <laughs> I, I was not tracking with you. Did you get all these, Emily? You're the expert here, right? <laughs> um, I didn't get them all right, uh, for sure. But I knew that he was fooling us, too. Yeah. So. Well, it was, it was kind of rude, wasn't it? <laughs> No, it was on purpose because I I've done this. I think one thing you didn't talk about is have you have you done it during the day on a sunny day and the whole wall yes. looks warm and you're like yeah hey this looks great and then you go back when it's dark and it lights up like a Christmas tree from the outside that's fun. Couldn't agree with that more. In fact, the thing I learned today that was kind of cool was that um, I had to glue this piece of paper. Oh, I already switched my share. I had to glue the piece of paper over the over the foil because it turns out that Tyvek is infrared, is fairly transparent to infrared. So wherever I, whenever I put the infrared on this piece of foil that when it was showing, um, well, all I was seeing was a reflection of whatever, whatever was on the exact opposite angle was being reflected into the infrared camera. So I built this thing outside on my driveway and I would shine the camera on it and I'm seeing it, it that, that foil was reading completely cold because I was looking at the, the sky, which is freezing cold. And then when I, I, mean, I knew when I brought it inside, I had like computers, lights, monitors, I had no idea what I would get. So I actually glued the piece of paper on it to block the infrared. <laughs> you learn something new. All right, I hope that was at least mildly entertaining. Um, well, very entertaining. All right, <laughs> so, uh, and obviously you weren't supposed to get it all right. These are, and every single one of these are things I've done wrong, so. Um, Please don't feel bad. Just I hope I hope it helps. Uh, hope to, it helps you in your practices uh, when you're out looking at this stuff. Okay, should I stop sharing, Randy? You ready to go? <laughs>